name is Design Walk-In. <laughs> um, so we're going to tell you a little bit about how we started the Design Walk-In. Uh, Ken and I both run our own studios. Mine's a design think tank called Architects. And Ken's is an amazing... Oh. <laughs> Mine's a skate shop, gallery, and uh, screen printing studio. Uh, called The Bait Shop. Called The Bait Shop. And about six to eight months ago, we both were sitting around having a few drinks, as designers do, and talking about how much time we spent talking to people who wanted to quote-unquote pick our brain. And after about an hour and a half of time with any particular person, we would find ourselves giving them a whole creative strategy, a whole, a whole production strategy, a whole any design strategy just sort of informally. And we, we started to think about like how it would be really nice to sort of formalize this idea. Um, about a, f a few drinks later, we came up with this idea of taking a walk-in medical clinic and just re, re rejigging it a little bit to be a design health clinic where people could walk in and get design advice on site because a lot of the work that we were doing was referring people to designers that we know. I teach at OCAD and so I have a lot of young designers around. So we, we wanted to set up a walk-in storefront space where people could access designers really easily. A couple of these slides are just of pictures of our, our process. We were generously donated space by Taz Design Build uh, to run this activation for the month and yeah, a couple of these slides are us working on some of the custom furniture and all the branded elements to try and make this one sort of cohesive identity and uh, an activation. So the whole space was custom designed. Um, so our patients come in, uh, they have, or maybe it's the next slide. Uh, the whole space was custom designed and we, what we wanted to do was create a really, uh, a sort of cheeky spin on the medical clinic um, and have a really iterative, uh, process where people come in to the design walk-in, um, they see our receptionist, they check in for their appointment, tell us a little bit about their project, their budget, and their timeline. Um, then we make them wait a painfully long amount of time, just like at a doctor's office. Uh, we bring them into the inpatient room and they sit up on the bench, which you'll see in the picture, um, with their feet dangling, which is kind of the funnest part of the whole thing. Uh, and then and then Ken or myself, depending on their, their problem area, will come in and see them and do an up to one hour consultation looking at their project, their timeline, their budget, and the kind of aesthetic and inspiration that they have, uh, the type of thing that they want to work on. So yeah, the type of design that we span, we have um, currently about 15 different disciplines of design that we are offering as you know, a, a service that we can consult on. Um, us ourselves are just general design consultants, but we have a broad range of specialists who are part of our network, and we refer clients to them post, uh, post their initial consultation with us. So how it works after the consultation is that our patients will leave, um, and we need to obviously spend some time going to the lab and doing a diagnosis. So we take, their, we take their project, we put together a diagnosis, and from that we create a referral. So our, our specialist list is comprised of specialists from all over the city, like Kenny said, from across 15 disciplines. Um, and what we do is we sort of go through our specialists and talk to them and see who's willing to work on the project at that timeline and that budget. And we give our patients a few options. They decide which one sort of fits their style and aesthetic. And then we make the referral and they're off to the races. Yeah, so a lot of the people that we've been seeing at our King Street location is uh, a lot of clients for interior design. But because of the big condo boom, you got a lot of people with kitchens that they don't know what to do with. So we got those people coming in. They need colors picked. They need you know finishes and all that kind of stuff. And this is me. <laughs> that's not, that's not a real consultation. We have patient patient doctor confidentiality <laughs> and uh, yeah so we we offer consultation in graphic design web design um, creative strategy uh, architecture interior design and all kinds of different things so so the great part of this has been that other cities have picked up on it and so our hope is to have a permanent space in Toronto by the new year and we have had some interesting offers from other cities to sort of how do you, the, the narrative is really about how do you make design accessible because a lot of people will go onto Google and, and search graphic design Toronto and they'll get the big firms when really they have $500 to spend on a web project. So what we wanted to do was sort of bridge the gap between the large agencies and the small freelance designers and for those who don't have huge web presences allow them to sort of get clients and start being known a little bit better. Because yeah, oftentimes people just are getting web design or graphic design done by somebody's roommates, brothers, cousins, to dog walkers, friend who is an OCAD student. And nothing against the OCAD students, but 
you know, like people need other options and that's what we're trying to, that's what we're trying to provide them. So if you have a design problem, we will take almost any project. We had someone walk in with um, a hundred dollar budget this week, which is a little bit below what designers will work for. Um, but almost any budget, almost any timeline, uh, what we're really trying to do is, it's, it's in part a public education project to get the general public understanding what actually is design, and design just isn't graphic design and interior, it also spans across a whole bunch of disciplines, and, and, and like, other, like other disciplines, we are professionals, as you can see, and so um, we just want other people to know that designers, designers go to school and they get educated in a, in a practice that a lot of people actually don't see, so for those of you designers in the crowd, design is about 80% process and about 20% output, and what we're really trying to do is get the general public to understand that that 80% of time is actually super, super important to value. And that's what they should be paying for. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think that's about it. We're yeah. done. What, what, this, is our, this is our lovely receptionist. We do have a sandwich board, which we're very excited about. Yeah. We also offer... Um, sorry, sorry. We also offer Tuesday afternoon free group therapy sessions. So if you do have a design problem and you feel the need to talk about it, you can come. It's free. It's anonymous. So don't worry. Your identity won't be revealed. And so. bring your lunch. Bring your own lunch, yes. So if you need more information, we're on Twitter at Design Walk-In. We're on Facebook at Design Walk-In or designwalkin.com. We're pretty easy to find. And come visit us 367 King Street West until the end of this month. Awesome. Thank you so much.